Being C-sharp developers, we write managed code. It means that the common language runtime, CLR in short, takes responsibility for managing memory automatically. As a consequence, we don't need to deallocate memory manually or explicitly. The garbage collector, GC in short, automatically removes all the eligible objects from memory. This significantly simplifies the software development under the .NET platform. Unfortunately, this is not the end of the story. The .NET platform does not live in a vacuum. Any meaningful program acquires system resources such as files, handles, sockets, DB connections, and so on. If you forget to remove them from memory, then you likely will get a so-called memory leak. Garbage collector will remove the managed object which contains an unmanaged resource from memory and as a result that unmanaged resource will consume memory until the program will be closed. The .NET framework provides two capabilities intended to deal with unmanaged resources. Firstly, the system object, which is a root for all the types in c -sharp, exposes the virtual finalize method. GC calls the finalize method before reclaiming the memory allocated for an object in the heap. GC calls the finalize method only for the objects which override the base finalize method. Objects which override the finalize method are called finalizable. GC adds finalizable objects to a special finalization queue. The support of the finalization mechanism provides a seam for inserting the code which releases unmanaged resources such as int ptr. The finalization mechanism has some peculiarities. Let's consider them. The moment of finalization is undetermined. This completely depends on the will of the CLR. You can't force the CLR to finalize a particular object by any means. As a corollary, you can't be sure about the current state of the program at the moment when finalization starts. When CLR finalizes an object, it puts off the actual reclaiming of that object's memory. GC will reclaim the memory only in the next collection process. This is quite unfortunate in high-performance scenarios. The second feature is provided by the BCL itself. It is the iDisposable interface which exposes only one method – void dispose. The intention of this method is to allow the explicit removal of the unmanaged resources. One of the side benefits of the iDisposable interface implementation is that such disposable types can be used in the using statements. Consider the following code snippet. This code will be compiled as the following. It guarantees that the object wrapped in a using statement will be disposed. Very handy! That was a brief introduction into the disposal mechanisms in c -sharp. How do you think? Do we need to implement iDisposable and override the finalized method at the same time each time we deal with acquired resources? To answer this question, let's start with a classic dispose pattern proposed by the .NET team long ago. We have a class named Resource Holder here, which implements both the iDisposable interface and the finalization method. This class contains two different types of resources, an unmanaged resource of the int ptr type and a managed resource of the safe handle type. It is important to understand that we have only two types of resources in .NET, managed and unmanaged. How to distinguish them? Well, unmanaged resources are represented by the int ptr wrapper and pure unmanaged memory allocated with unmanaged code. All the other resources are managed. If a resource contains the unmanaged resource, but implements iDisposable along the finalized method, it is a managed resource. So, save file handle is a great example of a managed resource. Save file handle contains an unmanaged resource inside itself, but save file handle should be treated as a managed resource since it takes all the responsibilities to dispose its internal unmanaged resources. If someone forgot to call the dispose method of a save file handle, in the end, CLR will call the finalizer of the save file handle. So we will not get a memory leak. Next, let's look at the dispose method. 
It calls the virtual dispose method passing true as the argument. The dispose method, which takes a boolean flag, is a method which actually performs all the cleanup. After calling the dispose, there's a call to GC suppress finalize, passing this as the argument. This call ensures that the CLR will not call the finalizer. We need to suppress finalization since we know at this moment that the manual cleanup is going on. There is no meaning to finalize the object. The flag which we pass as the argument to the virtual dispose method determines the mode of cleanup. True means that we are doing a manual or explicit disposal. We pass false from the finalize method. Remember that you have to firstly call the dispose method and only after that suppress finalization, not vice versa. This is because finalization should be suppressed only if the object is successfully disposed. This is an unfortunate temporal coupling between these two calls about which you should be aware of and remember it. Now remember that in the case of explicit disposal, we need to dispose both the managed and unmanaged resources, whereas in the case of finalization, we should clean only unmanaged. This is because we don't know the state of managed resource at the moment of finalization. Moreover, since we are already in the finalization stage and we have already missed the opportunity to gain some performance benefits, there is almost no meaning to clean up managed resources. The second reason is that you actually can't predict the state of managed resources at the stage of finalization. One would say that this is too complicated. And I would say, yeah, exactly, this is really too much. We started from simple things and with what we ended up. We ended up with a complicated pattern where we have to know all the peculiarities in order to avoid troubles. Can we avoid such a complicated approach for disposing resources? Yes, actually we can. Look at this code. Don't you feel that there is something wrong, taking into account that Presumably, this class contains some useful business logic, except storing a couple of resources. This class violates the single responsibility principle. Except its own responsibility, this class has to deal with disposing an unmanaged resource. The problem arises from the fact that we mixed here both managed and unmanaged resources. First of all, for almost all existing unmanaged resources, we have special managed wrappers in .NET, such as safe file handle. In 99% of cases, you can rely on them. If you have to deal with int ptr or you want to create your own type which works with memory directly through the unsafe code, then it would be better to roll out your own managed wrapper, like safe file handle. What I want to say is that you always can avoid the design where you mix managed and unmanaged resources. If your class contains only managed resources, then you don't have to implement the finalizer, since it will be actually meaningless. The only thing you want is to implement the iDisposable interface. If a client consciously used the dispose method, then everything just fine and super fast regarding the memory cleanup. If a caller forgot to manually dispose your object, then it's not so bad because your object contains only managed resources which implement finalizers internally. Thus, no memory leaks will occur. So, only the most low-level objects which directly work with memory through the unsafe code have to implement finalizers. As a corollary, we can say that in 99% of cases you don't need to implement the finalization method. Just implement the iDisposable and you'll be fine. Finally, I want to add a couple of rules when implementing disposal mechanisms. If the disposable class is not sealed, then you have to define the dispose method, which takes the boolean flag as virtual, since there can be inheritors. If the disposable class is sealed, then you have to make that method private. The disposable object can also keep track of its state in a field like bool is disposed. This field will serve as an indicator of the current state. You can check this flag in public methods and throw the object disposed exception in the case a caller tries to use the disposed object.
All these nasty checks can be compiled in automatically by a library named 4D Janitor. Check out the link attached to this lecture. If an application domain gets unloaded, then there is no guarantee that finalizers will be invoked. If you want to finalize an object even in such circumstance like unloading of the application domain, then you need to inherit your finalizable object from the critical finalizer object class. This gives some additional but weak guarantees. First, finalizers of such types are precompiled by JIT. So, in the case of insufficient memory, finalizers will be invoked most likely. Second, CLR guarantees that finalizers of types which do not inherit from the critical finalizer object will be invoked before those which do. So, actually, it means that if your class does not inherit from the critical finalizer object and it contains a safe handle, which does inherit the critical finalizer object, you can use that safe handle in the finalizer, since you can be sure that safe handle will be collected after your object. But as we have already discussed, implementing your own finalizers is an extremely rare case. In the end, I just want to show you the simple version of the iDisposable implementation where you don't implement a finalizing method. That's it. No special flags, no finalizers, no suppressing finalization calls and all the related logical complications.